Alrighty, welcome to the first time that I'm going to try out my new IPVO, um, which is a little handheld camera here for doing um, visual measuring. So what we're going to talk about today is if you are doing a still life, drawing from life, and how to visually measure your image. Now what I've done here, just so you can see what I see, is I've made a printout of a still life that I've made, and um, this makes sense because usually you're farther away, so the objects look smaller, and I'm going to draw on a larger sheet of paper. Now I am primarily going to talk about some visual measuring, namely size comparison, measuring the angle of an object, and then comparing um, horizontal and vertical comparisons between objects. So I'm going to draw twice as big to prove a point, and my highly technical tool here is a skewer, um, which are about a buck fifty or two dollars for a hundred of them. Not exactly an expensive piece of hardware, okay? You can also use a pencil or any other straight object. So what I'm going to start off by doing here is I'm going to visually measure my object. So if I was holding this out, the key thing would be to have a straight elbow, so your hand is the same distance from your face, but you would line up the top of your stick with the top of an object, and you would put your thumb at the bottom part of an object, like so. There's my visual measurement. So I'm going to bring this over here, and I'm going to put my mug about here. Actually, my wife's greyhounds make me happy mug. And I'm going to put a mark at the bottom, and since I'm making this twice as big, one, two, there's the top and the bottom. I'm going to take, and I'm going to measure the width, which happens to be exactly the same, which sort of weirded me out the first time I noticed that. So I'm going to put in my right side, and I'm making it once again twice as big. So there's my left side. So now what I have is I've got left side, top, right side, and bottom. And having your object boxed in like this makes your life a lot easier. So looking at this over here, I would say that maybe about a third of this is the handle. Third, about that. Okay, so there's the left side of my mug. And I didn't measure it. You don't have to measure everything. The idea of measurement is to measure what you need. But I need to make some observations here. So for instance, I've got a curved top and a curved bottom. Don't do this flat. People have a tendency to draw these things flat because that's what your left brain tells you to do. But your left brain lies to you all the time. Okay? It's great for some things, but not for drawing. Left brain draws like a four-year-old. Okay, so I'm going to do my little ellipse. That was ugly. Okay, so there's my mug and my handle. Let's see here. So the top of it starts near the top, the bottom a little bit higher up, maybe about there. Comes out to here. See how handy that box is? A little thinner at the top. And the handle is also a little thinner at the top, a little thicker at the bottom. So that's where your observational stuff comes in. Just because you're measuring doesn't mean you don't need to look. Okay, so there's my mug. Coolness, excellente. So now that I've got my main object, and this is going to be my focal point of my drawing, now that I've got that main focal point object in, the easiest thing to do is to draw something else which touches, like say, for instance, the glue stick. Now, I can do a size measurement. I'm going to use a measurement on what I already have. So this is the width of my top of my mug, okay? I'm going to use this as a comparison because this is about it's similar to a lot of the sizes of other things that I have in here, so that's going to be useful. So, for instance, my glue stick is just a little bit shorter than the width of my mug. Excellent. I am also going to measure my angle. There is the angle of my glue stick. So, real quick, I am doubling things in size. Okay. Um, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I know this is a little bit less, so... There's the width of my mug, basically using this as a measurement, a size measurement for everything else. Okay, I know that my glue stick is a little bit less than that. There's the angle of my glue stick, so I put that on my still life, and then I move this over, whoops, got bumped, sorry, move this over to my drawing. So there's the angle of my glue stick. Angle, a little bit less, that's the width of the mug, a little bit less. Okay, so... It's down here at the right side. So once again, I've got the top and bottom. Left and right, there's all the dimensions of my glue stick. Bottom ends in ellipse, otherwise known as an oval. 
ellipse makes you sound cool though, right? So ellipse at both ends. There's my glue stick. Okay. By the way, typically with mechanical objects like this, your ellipse will be perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle to the angle of the object. Top and bottom of the ellipse. Like that, like a cross. Okay. So once again, observational stuff. Da, da, da. There's the cap. There's the little twisty part. And we'll get into the other stuff later. So there's my angle measurement. I can use this for all sorts of stuff. So for instance, I can say, I have this charcoal pencil. There's the angle. I'm going to bring the angle over here. I would say there's the center point. It's just to the right of that. There's the center point just to the right of that. Cool. There's the angle. And as a comparison, because you're not always going to do exactly twice as, as like a, a two to one width, I'm going to use the comparison of my mug. So the charcoal is almost, stick is almost the exactly same, charcoal pencil, whatever. We all know what I'm talking about. Okay, so there's the width of my mug. The charcoal pencil is the same. There's the end, cool. Charcoal pencil. Just a little bit of a curve there. Comes in. Tip is very thick. It's not a typical pencil. It's charcoal. There we are. Okay. The other pencil comes out from behind it, and that gets us into horizontal and vertical comparisons. So there's the top of the charcoal pencil. You can see the white charcoal pencil is a little bit above it. A little bit above it. Comes out from behind it. So once again, I'm using an object that I already have and I'm drawing an object which is touching it. It's going to end there. A little bit higher. It's kind of straight across right there. Close enough I can tell. Do, 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 do. There we go. Excellent. Okay. So what we have now is we've done size. Okay. So you get the height and width of an object. You box it in so you know where your dimensions are pay attention to how the shapes change. You know, is it curved? Is it squared off? Is it whatever? Is it thinner? Is it thicker? We've done angle. So we've got the angle. So remember you put the angle on here, slide it on over. If you've got something touching, that makes your life easier. And you can still do your size measurement comparing to something. So we've compared it to this, right? We've used this as our size measurement tool for a whole bunch of different things. Now, so we've got angle, size, a little bit of horizontal versus vertical comparison, but that's pretty easy, right? Where this is really useful is where you have objects that are very far away. They're not touching at all. So if I can find a reference, so on this box, okay, it happens to line up with the top of the mug there. Sorry, top of the handle there. And I could also use my size measurement to figure out how far away it is. So there's the width of my mug. Okay, I'd say it's about two thirds, right? So let's figure out where this thing is. Okay, so it's about two thirds. So there's the left side of that box. Okay, and that corner is just below the top of the handle. So corner is just below the top of the handle. There's a corner. Okay, well now I do angle measurement. So there's my angle. Keep it at the same angle. Bring it over here. Okay, I'm not worried about size yet. I'm just getting the angles first. Okay, so compared to the width of my mug, it is a little bit less. Compared to the width of my mug, it is, I'm oh, sorry, I was running into my little camera thing, a little bit less. Okay, so there's angle of my box. There's the end of my box. And as far as the height goes, width of the mug, and the entire box is just a little bit less. You can see right there, right? Just a little bit less. So width of my mug, just a little bit less. So I've boxed in my box, sort of. I guess I've got this section back here too, right? But. Do angle. Oops, try that again. All right, so there's the 
there's that. And a little bit thicker. Once again, I just kind of make I can make a pretty quick visual comparison. I don't need to measure that to that. I can figure that one out on my own. I feel that capable. You measure where you need to, okay? So what happens with these skills is that will you always need them? No. Will you need them at some point? Yes. Everyone has this point where they're going to hit and go, you know what? I need to check that. And if you don't think that's true, then you're probably drawing stuff wrong, to be perfectly honest with you. Okay, so that's why you need to learn the skills, even if on something you look at and go, ah, I can do this practice thing. It's a practice thing. Okay, so we got that box here. So what else can I do with this? Okay, well, I got the back of the box here. Uh, it's about the middle of the handle. Middle of the handle. There's the back of the box. And once again, you can make comparisons to what you already have. Once you draw something, you kind of have to assume that it's correct. There's the top of that little paint bottle. I'll do another horizontal comparison here. So, oh, lines up with the bottom of the handle. Lines up with the bottom of the handle. Okay. And... I can make comparisons to what I already have. Okay, but now by the way, is this thing, I bet you it's not that skinny. That paint bottle's not that skinny right there. You're going to have imperfections, especially with angles where things don't line up quite right. Guess what? Deal with it. It's just going to happen. You are not a camera. There are going to be things that are going to be a little bit off and don't obsess, okay? Um, as long as if you look at it and it doesn't seem completely wacko as compared you know, as regards to proportions and stuff, it's just going to happen. Just deal with it, move on, uh, make it look good. Remember that people are going to see your drawing. They're not going to see the original object, photograph, whatever ha you have. And so the world is not going to come crashing to a halt. Okay, so we had a bunch of horizontal comparisons. Well, let me do a last vertical one here. So, for instance, this is a, a three-way highlighter. It's a really cool diagonal highlighter, triangular highlighter. And the end of it is just to the right of the left of this box. This is my vertical comparison, right? So if I do a line lightly down from there, and I can see that the bottom of this comes out from here, and I says just to the right, there we go, of the edge of that box, and the top of it is right there at the edge of the mug, okay? And this is where negative space comes in. Negative space is the space between, and here, hey, let's pop out a highlighter. Um, even though it's not going to come out in color, so I don't know if that's going to work. Here, we're going to try. We're going to see what we get, okay? So the negative space is this space in between these two objects, like so, okay? And I can sort of look at that space and go, okay, I want to look at that as a shape. If I can see that as a shape, that's really going to help me out. So now... Once again, I'm looking at this as a shape, okay? And that gives me a bunch of relationships between objects, which is really useful. So I've got the top of my triangle. I can see it angles back behind this. I've got this down here. It angles slightly up to the left, slightly up to the left, okay? I can use this to get the back of my box. comes out from behind the mug a little bit. Right? I could use it here for the back of the box where it comes out from behind the paint canister. So there we go. comes off the edge. And the bottom of, or actually the front edge of this box is just below the glue stick. Front edge of this is just below the glue stick. So you can see I'm constantly jumping around between size comparisons, angle comparisons, horizontal vertical comparisons, all that sort of stuff. And you you use them all. You use them all, all the time. And there we go, a little bit of touch up. And basically at this stage, I'm ready to start throwing in details to refine my edges and life is good. There we go.